Hello, I'm William Michael of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and uh, in this video I'd like to talk about uh, an important topic that comes up in my consultation meetings with Catholic parents. Often um, parents will have uh, younger children, and they'll ask me, you know, what should we focus on? What, what's important as we, we try to get started to help our children prepare for studies in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, or I'll have older uh, students and their parents asking uh, as they get started, um, how much time should we uh, spend on these studies? How much time should I, should I budget for these courses and, and uh, what's necessary time-wise for study in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy? So questions about scheduling and time and priorities and preparation and, you know, what, what's most important and things like that. And I always give them the same answer. And I've been giving this answer to parents ever since I started the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. In fact, if you were to go back to the very beginning, um, one of the first articles I ever published was titled How to Create a Schedule. What I advise parents is... Studying is like cleaning. You can never be done. There's never a time. It's, it's never possible for anyone to be done studying. Uh, and so when we ask a question like, how much time does it take to do these studies? Th there's no answer to that question. It's, are, you, are you asking about minimum requirements? Like what's the minimum amount of time that you would need to study to to complete these studies that that question doesn't make much sense there's no way to answer that because if you're a genius it won't take you much time and if you're uh if you're not a genius it's going to take you more time so so the question doesn't make much sense it's a bad question and really it's the wrong question though i understand what parents are 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 trying to ask me. It's the wrong question. What I tell parents is, as parents, especially as homeschooling parents, you need to establish a schedule for your family. And it needs to be a balanced, responsible schedule. It needs to be balanced. That's the key word. You're a creature composed of body and soul. Your children are immature creatures composed of body and soul. Your children are growing and developing. Your children um, may not have even reached the age of reason yet. Your children have different levels of strength, physical strength, intellectual strength, strength of character, and so on. There are all these variables in your family life, and your schedule can only be called a responsible schedule when it takes all of those things into consideration. You have to create, as a parent, you have to create a balanced, realistic schedule for your family. And when I say balanced, uh, you have a lot more to do every day than just study. I don't think there's anyone who wakes up in the morning and says, I have nothing to do today except study. That's just not how study works. Study is always pursued within the context of other activities. There's other things that have to be done. Even if we were to go to a monastery um, or a convent where there are monks and nuns, uh, we would see that they have a balanced schedule. Even though you might think they have lots of time to study or lots of time to pray, they also have time scheduled for work, time scheduled for recreation, time scheduled for sleep. Um, they have a, a balanced, responsible, realistic schedule for their community. And we need the same uh, for a homeschool or for a, a school community. There needs to be a balanced schedule. So when parents ask, how much time is needed or what should we focus on? My answer is always, you need to establish a balanced schedule for your family, a, a schedule that's happy, a schedule that provides for work to be done. Your family has to pay bills. It's not just dad's job. Um, the family can help dad pay the bills. So 
the family can help with family business. The family can help earn a living together. Uh, you've also got to pray. You've got um, devotional activities taught by the church, and there's no way to practice those things unless they're scheduled into the day. Daily Mass might be an option. It needs to be scheduled into the day. Confession needs to be scheduled into the day. It can't happen um, if it's not scheduled in. Then there's study. Then there's chores around the house. Then there's need for uh, physical exercise. There's a need for, for recreation, um, to, to refresh. That's what recreation means. It means to refresh the body and mind after uh, times of study and work. There needs to be a scheduled time for sleep. There needs to be a balanced schedule. Now, when you lay out a balanced schedule and consider all of those things in light of all of the goals that your family has, all of the responsibilities and duties which, which vary from family to family, when you lay out a, a balanced schedule that includes all of your responsibilities, um, there are going to be empty places in that schedule where there's nothing else to do and those times can be used for study. Uh, outside of work, outside of prayers, outside of sacramental life, outside of necessary sleep, outside of necessary mealtime, outside of physical exercise that's necessary, there are going to be natural times available for study. And so the question really is not, uh, how much time will this take? The question is, how much time do you have to study? And ideally, the, we can maximize that time. And if we maximize that time and we have a, a sustainable, responsible schedule, we can maintain that schedule for thousands and thousands of days over the years. And that's how um, academic gets, work gets done. But academic work only gets done responsibly when it's done within a balanced life. Um, the, the scriptures teach us that wisdom, and listen to this, wisdom will not enter into a body enslaved to sin or into a soul enslaved to sin. That's in the Old Testament. Wisdom will not enter into a soul enslaved to sin. So if our lives are, are disorderly and we're not fulfilling our duties, we're neglecting responsibilities, learning will never be possible. And this is why St. Paul talks about people who are always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Always learning, but never growing in wisdom. So when we consider a balanced schedule, that gives us time to study within the context of a responsible life. And, and that's really where progress is going to be made in studies. That's when studies are going to be successful. That's how studies are going to be sustainable over time. And that's how great achievement is going to happen. So the answer to that question, um, as I said, parents who have young children and they ask, what should we work on? What should we focus on? The answer is establishing a schedule, establishing a balanced family life that's actually happy and sustainable. That's what you should focus on when you have young children. They can't get into academic work yet. And if you have academic ambitions for them, if you don't establish an environment in the home that's supportive of learning, that actually allows them to live a balanced life and um, allows them to pursue studies consistently over a long period of time, it doesn't matter what your academic ambitions are because you're not going to achieve them. Um, most homeschool families try to pursue learning with unrealistic schedules. Um, they, they, they create a schedule that they think would be great, you know, if, if they just uh, sort of design their ideal schedule, but they don't have the ability to keep that schedule. And that's, that's really not a schedule at all. Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We're limited by, by, by real restrictions. Another thing I should say is that many families 
or many individuals, um, they talk about saving money, they talk about saving time, but one thing that they don't pay attention to is saving or conserving energy, conserving your own physical energy through the day. Uh, many, many people waste energy on unnecessary things, whether it's arguing, emotional energy, all these different activities. And when it's time to study, they've used up their physical and emotional energy, intellectual energy, and they're tired. And there's no energy left to study. And, and one of the disciplines of an intellectual life is that you have to learn how to conserve your energy so that it can be used for study. Um, so there are practical things, but these relate to scheduling and maintaining balance. You've got to stay physically fit. You've got to stay healthy. Um, when you exercise, you, your body gets stronger. Your cardiovascular system uh, becomes more efficient. It gives you more energy, allows you to do more work. So, you know, there's a need to, to exercise. If, if you're not praying, and if you're not living an obedient Catholic life, your conscience will be bothering you and you won't be able to concentrate on studies. If you're wasting time watching all kinds of, of uh, dopey movies or reading uh, unnecessary books for entertainment, all of those ideas and images are going to be distracting you when it's time to really study. And so you've got to develop a discipline and a routine, and it requires a certain level of strength and focus. And if you don't have a balanced life and a responsible schedule that you keep, you're simply not going to be able to do it. <clears throat> so the first thing a, a family has to concentrate on is establishing a balanced, healthy, sustainable schedule that allows times for study where uh, students have full energy, they have no distractions, they have good conscience, um, all of these benefits, and in that context, they can pursue studies in as much time as their schedule allows. And again, we have to realize that we have thousands and thousands and thousands of days. So even if we only had four hours a day to study, which is not true, but let's just say we only had four hours a day to study, that doesn't sound like much when we consider that a, a modern school might have six or seven hours, but the modern school is only in session for 180 days a year. We, we're in session as homeschool families 365 days a year. So even though, even if, I should say, even if you didn't have much time in your schedule for study, you still have more time because you have more days. And so a balanced, responsible schedule will still allow you to get more done. When we look at why kids don't get stuff done, let's let's not kid ourselves. It's because it's it's not because minutes are wasted here and there or hours are wasted here and there. It's because whole days are wasted, whole weeks are wasted. That's why kids don't get studies done. It's it's not because the schedule leaves them you know, unsupervised for a few minutes and, and, and they're not using their time or even hours. It's because whole weeks go by. I see it even in working with students in tutoring. I'll see a whole week where a student might not get a task done. And when I, when I dig in to try to find out the reason, it's just because life is too chaotic. And, and that's the kind of stuff that actually prevents us from making progress in studies. It's not all of this you know, popular talk about micromanaging schedules and, and making the best use of time. That's not what the problem is. The problem is that there's no proper use of time. There's no balanced schedule. There are days spent with no schedule, weeks spent with no schedule. That's, that's the real problem. And so parents need to work on establishing a, a happy schedule. You know, one of the principles uh, when we look at things like uh, the work that, that Apple does with computers and iPhones and, and um, their laptops and things like that, their workstations they make for computers, Microsoft does the same things in, in their devices and equipment. One of the things that they talk about is the work environment. And you look at, a, you look at an Apple device and you're like, uh, or a Mac device, and you say, man, that, why is that so expensive? Why does, a, why does a Mac laptop 
cost three thousand dollars uh, why does a windows computer cost two thousand dollars you know when the chromebook costs uh, 180 bucks why the difference in price and and the answer that they'll give you is well you know what go ahead and do your work on that chromebook and let us know how it goes at, at by the end of a 10-hour day uh, let us know how much work you get done over the course of a whole workday or, or a whole week of work. And so these companies take into consideration not just what's minimally required to get stuff done, which is what a Chromebook can provide, but they consider the reality that we have to sit and work and open up the same device every day, look at the same screens every day, use the same keyboard and mouse every day, and there's, there's a need for it to be comfortable and enjoyable, to be pleasant and attractive because we have to use it all the time. And that design takes into consideration the reality that we're going to be working on this device for eight, nine, ten hours a day. It can't be minimal. It's got to be pleasant to work with, pleasant to look at, pleasant to use, um, and that costs money. And uh, while we can complain about the costs, if you compare the costs to productivity, you'll find that the productivity is actually uh, greater than the cost. And so that's the reasoning behind the design of companies like Microsoft and, and, uh, and, and Apple when they, when they design their devices. And the same thing is true of our lives. We can sit here and we can create a schedule that on paper is is uh you know is, is attractive on paper but then to live that life to actually live that schedule is miserable and it's just not practicable so um we have to schedule times in for sleep times in for uh meals times in for recreation and exercise and things like that uh, we have to make our life pleasant we have to make our study periods pleasant uh, because that's just the reality of of how life works. We, we're not we're not robots. We don't have infinite amounts of energy. It's not just a matter of willpower. Not just a matter of desire. It's also limited by human weakness. And so, to accomplish great things as a human being, we have to learn to manage our resources, our time, our energy, our money in order to accomplish great things, usually by working little by little, bit by bit, for a long period of time. So my first advice to families, my advice to, um, to older students, how much time should we study? The answer is you have to create a balanced, happy, healthy, responsible schedule first. And then that will reveal to you how much time is available for you to study and then it's a challenge for you to not waste that time but actually to make the best possible use of that time and to fill it with with good and necessary studies like classical liberal arts classical philosophy catholic theology to make the best use of that time so that's my advice on uh what families should be focused on, what students should make their first priority. And that's my answer to the question, how much time should we spend on these studies? The answer is as much time as you can within a balanced uh, daily schedule. So I hope that's helpful. If you have practical questions, would like to get into the details of such a schedule, uh, talk about a sample schedule, talk about your unique circumstances, uh, just get in touch because these things are really important and I'm happy to get into them. I hope that's helpful. God bless.